Your Honor, it would be uh, the defense intent to uh, inquire of Mr. Hall as to the following. Um, certainly, uh, any events leading up to their Mr. Hall and Mr. Floyd's arrival at Cup Foods earlier in the day, where they were, what they were doing. Um, Mr. Hall's interactions with Mr. Floyd in the Cup Foods, including whether either party gave the other uh, a counterfeit bill, um, whether or not Mr. Hall gave, sold, or otherwise provided Mr. Floyd with controlled substances, um, specifically whether uh, Mr. Floyd his behavior in the car. Mr. Hall previously described that Mr. Floyd had, was falling asleep, that it was sudden. I would ask him questions about um, Mr. Hall's previous statements to law enforcement that, uh, that Mr. Floyd had indicated he did not intend to, uh, or that he was planning on taking these pills later when they got home, implying that Mr. Floyd took them before they left. Um, Mr. Hall described seeing Mr. Floyd go for the ignition when the police arrived, so his behaviors in the car at the time police arrived. Um, Mr. Hall, uh, I would intend to ask him about giving false names to police officers after uh, they were intervened, after the police intervened. Uh, Mr. Hall is seen on a security camera uh, taking something out of his backpack and throwing it. Um, I would ask him about those and what it was that he threw. And I would also ask Mr. Hall about um, his decision to leave Minnesota immediately after this incident and his sub subsequent apprehension by the Texas Rangers. Well, let me uh, focus on a couple things. I think you would agree that any questions that he answers about the counterfeit bill falls within his could incriminate him. Would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, also, the false information he gave to the police, he would have a legitimate invocation of his Fifth Amendment rights there as well. Yes. And what he took out of the backpack, that that's a legitimate Fifth Amendment privilege to invoke there. Yes. Uh, flight as a, as circumstantial evidence of guilt, you would agree that his fleeing to Texas, if you went into motives, as opposed to simply traveling to Texas, that that could be considered uh, incriminating, would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, use and possession of drugs by both of them during that day, uh, that could incriminate him based on uh, counsel's representation, would you agree with that? Yes. It seems like just about everything that you want to ask him, except the following, he would have a legitimate right to uh, invoke his Fifth Amendment rights against compelled self-incrimination, and that being, how George Floyd appeared when he was back in the car and the falling asleep suddenly. Would you? Well, I mean, I, the, the impact. And I'm sure counsel is going to say that that's incriminating. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I do not believe that that in and of itself incriminates Mr. Hall in terms of a description of Mr. Floyd falling asleep. But the implication being that because fentanyl was, was found in Mr. Floyd's system, that, and it causes a person to fall asleep, that that would be um, ostensibly connected to ingestion of controlled substances. So, I mean, remotely perhaps, I would argue, but not in and of itself. All right. Ms. Cousins, would you? Uh... And unfortunately, you don't have the benefit of having sat through all the testimony, but uh, it appears that this would be a proper invocation of his Fifth Amendment rights for just about everything Mr. Nelson was talking about. The one exception appears to be his observations sitting in the passenger seat of the car as how Mr. Floyd appeared, that he was falling asleep and that it happened suddenly. Very narrow, and the reason why I'm, I say that is because we have kind of a parallel uh, testimony from a clerk in the store who said Mr. Floyd appeared good-natured, uh, seemed to be having a good day, but he did appear to be high. Um, I don't even think I'd allow counsel to ask whether he appeared high, because uh, that could have formed some kind of opinion and uh, infer a basis that he knew why he was under the influence. But it seems to me that just his description, Mr. Hall's description of, like the store clerk, 
is not going to incriminate him if there's no uh, questioning about how he how he had uh, why he fell asleep why he thinks he fell asleep that there were drugs in the car that he knew there were drugs in the car that there was any possession by Mr. Floyd of drugs uh, that day that he saw if we totally avoid the word drugs and just to have Mr. Hall say I was the passenger in the car which is already clear there's video and evidence just for your uh, knowledge that Mr. Hall is in the passenger seat and is removed by the police uh, beyond that, if that were established that he was the passenger when the police came up to the car, what was Mr. Floyd's condition immediately that he observed immediately before that? Would you agree that that's not incriminating if we keep all the mention of drugs or why or anything like that? No, Your Honor, I do not agree. That how that would that, when it did not incriminate the clerk who said he thought he was high, how would it be that Mr. Hall saying that would incriminate him? Well, because first of all, Judge, the inquiry is not what evidence is in front of the jury. What testimony have they heard? The no, I'm just using that as an analogy on how that certainly didn't incriminate the store clerk by saying, well, he appeared high. Well, Mr. Hall saying, well, he appeared like he was falling asleep and it happened suddenly without anything else seems to be a, a parallel type evidence. So I was using it as an analogy. I understand, Judge, but the whole point here is to prevent Mr. Hall from incriminating himself. And him even answering that question that he was in the car puts him in very close proximity with Mr. Floyd in very close in time before he's alleged to have ingested drugs. And again, it exposes him on that third degree murder charge. If there were to be a future third degree murder charge and Mr. Hall was charged with um, basically being involved in this drug activity that had caused Mr. Floyd to pass away due to an overdose, him even being in that car um, incriminates him in terms of behaviors of Mr. Floyd, what he observed when he observed it. So no, Your Honor, I would um, argue that it definitely would um, expose him to potential incrimination. Uh, well, not to mention, Judge, that this is a car where drugs uh, have been found twice. Well, and the state has all that evidence. That's pretty clear. And I know we're not talking about, but that didn't incriminate him. The video of him sitting next to George Floyd does not incriminate him or not has, has not subjected him to criminal liability, at least yet. So and you're I saying beyond the, that, that? That's the key word, Judge, is yet. Yeah. Is yet. The question you, th is, you think him, his observations of how George Floyd looked would incriminate him? I don't, I don't see how that would put him closer to criminal liability just with those observations. Because it then takes the onus off of the state in any future, future prosecutions to prove what demeanors, behaviors, attitudes Mr. Floyd was exhibiting should they decide to charge Mr. Hall with a crime. Now they've got his own testimony to use against him. That's the very definition of a Fifth Amendment privilege, Judge. Well, if it incriminates. Yes. Just the fact that he testifies does not make it incriminating. But his testimony would be used to incriminate him in a future prosecution. 